Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6017. This case file starts rather unusually, with a quiz showing various images of rural or forest pictures, and the question what can you spot in this picture? If you answer incorrectly you will see a falsified version of the SCP-6017 case file, if you answer correctly you will see the true file. The falsified version is presented at the end. Item number, SCP-6017 Object Class, Thaumiel Special Containment Procedures Information about the true character of SCP-6017 is accessible only by members of Project Mower and O5 Council. Falsified SCP-6017, designation SCP-6017-F, entry to database based on the incident PM-I-30.09.2017 has been provided to conceal vital to Project Mower anomaly. Such precautionary measures allowed partial disclosure of Project Mower while also providing substantiation for its existence and allocated resources. Controlled propagation of strong SCP-6017 effect among human population is considered desirable in the long-term foundation strategy. To achieve such outcome, it is paramount to attain full mastery of this anomaly and complete secrecy from remaining paranormal organizations. Current efforts are concentrated on gathering additional data by surveillance of controlled populations at isolated and extraterrestrial foundation facilities. Moreover, identification of SCP-6017 effects combined with methods of regulating them are still being investigated and refined. Description SCP-6017 was discovered on 25th of May 2010 by Dr. Emily Winsor, at time chief director of a research team studying noticeable increase in rate of new anomalies occurrence. Due to held position and wide scope of administered operations, Dr. Emily Winsor noticed similar traits among most of the eminent personnel. This observation was later confirmed by additional tests and currently forms the basis of foundation knowledge about SCP-6017. Informality of research combined with unfathomability of anomaly character to the most of the erstwhile members of the O5 Council led to impediment in registration of SCP in Central Database. Only in 2017 this process was finalized and the anomaly was assigned Hidden Spot 6017, which currently contains falsified information and is widely accessible. In the same year Project Mower was established to gather data and conduct research on SCP-6017. SCP-6017 affects all self-conscious intelligent beings, however strength of its influence varies based on the resultant of the multiple factors, mainly the level of integration with the local universe. It can be generally described as an ability to sense disturbance in the fabric of reality. Depending on initial strength of SCP-6017 effect and additional training of affected individuals, Use of traits acquired due to this anomaly could counteract the number of cognitohazard and mimetic agents. In some extreme cases, foresight granted by SCP-6017 allowed for safe interactions with typically hostile corporeal anomalies. Currently utilized by Project Mower method of classification in controlled populations is based on a checkbox quiz appropriately modified with mimetic agents combined with amnestics prepared by personnel under strongest SCP-6017 influence. All beings affected by SCP-6017 are categorized and assigned to one of three groups characterized based on strength of anomaly influence, S1 standard, S2 salient and S3 supreme. Any given population is expected to be composed of about 95% S1 group, whereas the remaining 5% is divided between S2 standing for roughly 99 percentage points and S3. With rapid growth of anomalous activity in this universe it has been concluded that an increased population of salient and supreme individuals would greatly improve humanity's chances of survival. For that reason Foundation places immense value on cooperation with S3 class individuals who are paramount to fully comprehend SCP-6017 effect. As for May 25, 2021, our organization has in its ranks 009 of such beings in prominent positions in Project Mower and O5 Council. 
for research on creating beings under SCP-6017 Influence Project MOER is substituting organic life forms by deploying conscious artificial intelligence due to its fast development cycle and high compliance factor with human mentality. Initially, reality anchors were used to stimulate growth of SCP-6017 effect in tested populations, However, it was quickly discovered that such solution could not provide required levels of reality and lacked any sufficient guidance. Based on the new theory of multiple realities universes, reality control device has been built for project more use. New hardware allows to create and sustain in controlled manner local super reality by overlaying matching realities. By May 25, 2021, Project Moore has been able to create under experimental conditions a population of 1,100 chi consisting of groups S1 and S2 in the ratio of 3 to 7, respectively. Testing on human clones is to begin in a second phase of Beautiful Dawn operation. Addendum 1, first vote to allocate a place in the database. Vote took place on July 20, 2010 on request of Dr. Emily Winsor. Council Member 05-1 against proposal. Council Member 05-2 absent. Council Member 05-3 against proposal. Council Member 05-4 against proposal. Council Member 05-5 against proposal. Council Member 05-6 against proposal. Council Member 05-7 against proposal. Council Member 05-8 absent. Council Member 05-9 for proposal. Council Member 05-10 against proposal. Council Member 05-11 against proposal. Council Member 05-12 against proposal. Council Member 05-13 absent. By an overwhelming vote, the proposition was rejected. Additional comment from 05-1, we cannot allow our database to be ground for personal project repository with little to none regards to science. Addendum 2, second vote to allocate a place in the database. Vote took place on March 15, 2017 on request of 05-1. Council Member 05-1 for proposal. Council Member 05-2 for proposal. Council Member 05-3 for proposal. Council Member 05-4 for proposal. Council Member 05-5 for proposal. Council Member 05-6 for proposal. Council Member 05-7 for proposal. Council Member 05-8 for proposal. Council Member 05-9 for proposal. Council Member 05-10 for proposal. Council Member 05-11 for proposal. Council Member 05-12 for proposal. Council Member 05-13 for proposal. By unanimous vote, the proposition was accepted. Additional comment from 05-1, this vote starts a new chapter in Foundation history, one where we can take full advantage of our enormous potential to help humankind. Addendum 3. Note to Project More members from the O5 Council. Missed. Welcome on board. We are glad to have you with us in this troubling times. With your expertise Project More and many more similar undertakings will serve to improve humanity. All of you can rest assured that you will return to a better Earth with the conclusion of the fourth phase of Beautiful Dawn operation. For we have been dying too long in the dark without giving the light away. Addendum 4. Notes on the incident PM slash I slash 30.09.2017. First implementation of the checkbox quiz to test foundation personnel for strength of SCP-6017 effect lacked integrated failsafe. Investigation revealed that in certain scenarios tests can be completely decoupled from uploaded separately control software. Such a situation took place at 7.21 a.m. on January 10, 2017 during evaluation of SCP-6017 influence on James Smith, janitor of Site-19. Incident was resolved with help of local Project MORE operator, Andrew Veridi. Following interview was conducted 20 hours after James Smith was apprehended. Welcome James, I'm Andrew Veridi, and I'll be conducting an interview with you about yesterday's occurrence. Jay is all right. I've been told you recovered from the incident. 
You should be familiar with the protocol. Please, state your name and occupation. J.S. James Smith. I've been working here as a janitor for over two years. Thanks. Let's start from the beginning. You missed yesterday's morning shift because of an unknown anomaly. Tell me everything you remember about it. JSO. It was about 10 minutes to 7.30. I was checking my assignment on tap and then it just opened. It looked like a quiz about plants or something. I had some time to kill. I just gave a few answers and nearly completed it. You can check it. Sadly your personal database access point has been destroyed during your struggle to cooperate with the security team. But you were saying that you answered a few questions, did you feel compulsion to do so? Haven't you noticed that you spent two hours on that quiz? JS I didn't know. I don't know, maybe at first there was nothing. Later everything is blurry. All right, relax. You are not in any trouble, we just want to know what happened. Do you remember how many questions you answered? JS maybe a few hundred. I was so close. Close to what? JS to the end. To explanation. And that's what made you angry at the security team. That they were trying to stop you. JS I don't remember. But I didn't feel angry. Just. Incompleted. And now how are you? Do you still feel this way? JSI. Yes. Are you okay? JSI. James, talk to me. Due to quick actions of researcher Viridi, all evidence leading to the true nature of SCP-6017 and Project Mower involvement was disposed of. To prevent further questioning James Smith had been administered selective amnestic. Based on this incident a false entry in the central SCP database was created. Link to falsified SCP-6017-F is placed below. Item number, SCP-6017. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures, it is currently impossible to determine the source of SCP-6017, and as such fully contain this anomaly. For that reason any Foundation employee with access to the central SCP database should be familiarized with this file. SCP-6017 manifestations can be detected and redirected from by artificial intelligence devised by the Project Mower. This process can last from 30 seconds for an active anomaly, to an hour for the ignored SCP-6017 instance. For this reason it is generally advised to cautiously interact with manifestation. If for any reason AI fails to redirect from an anomaly after 10 slides or compulsion to interact with SCP-6017 becomes unbearable, it is strongly advised to call for help. Attempts to aid unresponsive subjects are to be handled by the site security. For further assistance contact members of Project Moore. Description SCP-6017 was discovered on September 30, 2017 at Site-19 and since then it has been appearing with increasing frequency. Its ability to bypass during initial manifestation any firewall deployed by Foundation and correlation to the central SCP database are under investigation. To contain or dispose of SCP-6017 Project Mower was established three months after the initial encounter with the anomaly. By November 18, 2020 deployment of artificial intelligence developed to detect SCP-6017 after manifestation yielded most promising results as it is able to redirect from the anomaly to this file. SCP-6017 only appears on devices connected to the central SCP database and takes the form of a multiple choice quiz. It consists of various panels composed of photos, Corresponding questions regarding widely understood ecological knowledge and six checkbox answers. Selecting at least one checkbox is necessary to proceed on to the next slide. Total of 0010000 individual panels have been cataloged by Project Mower. Further research has been deemed ineffectual. Questions appear in a fixed order and are universally shared between all SCP-6017 manifestations. However, it is impossible to determine which of the given answers are correct. All of the strongly affected by prolonged interaction with Anomaly Express believe that answers will be verified after completion of the quiz. 
SCP-6017 possesses mild mimetic influence on humans that gradually increases in intensity on further slides. Affected subjects gradually find themselves under compulsion to interact with anomalous quiz. For 99.7% of the tested population, symptoms of this effect are starting to be noticeable at panel 15 and slide 500 marks the point where the urge to complete SCP-6017 manifestation becomes irresistible. By that time affected subject stops responding to any stimulus other than a quiz and may react aggressively at attempts of separation from the anomaly. Without help humans under mimetic effect of SCP-6017 manifestations would surely perish, however full recovery is possible with appropriate care. Addendum 1, Post-Discovery Interview Following interview was conducted on January 10, 2017 between researcher Andrew Veridi and janitor James Smith, the first affected subject. Welcome James, I'm Andrew Viridi, and I'll be conducting an interview with you about yesterday's occurrence. J.S. Alright. I've been told you recovered from the incident. You should be familiar with the protocol, please, state your name and occupation. J.S. James Smith, I've been working here as a janitor for over two years. Thanks. Let's start from the beginning, you missed yesterday's morning shift because of an unknown anomaly. Tell me everything you remember about it. J.S.O. It was about 10 minutes to 7.30. I was checking my assignment on tap and then it just opened. It looked like a quiz about plants or something, I had some time to kill. I just gave a few answers and nearly completed it. You can check it. Sadly your personal database access point has been destroyed during your struggle to cooperate with the security team. But you were saying that you answered a few questions, did you feel compulsion to do so? Haven't you noticed that you spent two hours on that quiz? JS I didn't know. I don't know, maybe at first there was nothing. Later everything is blurry. All right, relax. You are not in any trouble, we just want to know what happened. Do you remember how many questions you answered? JS maybe a few hundred. I was so close. Close to what? JS to the end. To explanation. And that's what made you angry at the security team. That they were trying to stop you. JS I don't remember, but I didn't feel angry, just incompleted. And now how are you? Do you still feel this way? JSI, yes. Are you okay? JSI. James, talk to me. Interviewee suffered a nervous breakdown and stopped responding, following interviews were unproductive. Subject lost all memories about the incident as psychic rehabilitation proved successful only after selective use of amnestics. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.